Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Gaprod. And today we are going to see something super cool in my opinion, which is how to create this black hole. As you can see it has some distortion going on, which is done in shader graph and it's basically a heat distortion shader, which adds a really nice touch. And then we got some spirals and some particles made with VFX graph. As usual this is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested I'll have the link in the description. So with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So first let's make sure that we go to package manager and that we have installed visual effects graph and shader graph as well. From there we can go ahead and create an unlit graph. This is going to be our heat distortion shader. And once you open it up, you want to make sure that this one has the surface set to transparent. You can also turn on two sided. Okay, so let me just duck this right here so we can have a better perception of how the heat distortion works, right? So let's start with the node call it scene color and this gives us access to the camera's color buffer if you want to learn more i left a link in the description to the documentation and once we connect this to the color input if we save this if we create the material out of this shader and then create for example a plane and assign the respective material you will notice that it seems like it's transparent but in fact it isn't, it is simply showing the current camera's color buffer. And since we can assign it a UV, theoretically speaking, if we distort that UV, we get a distortion. So let's add a UV node, and then a noise, like a simple noise, and we want to add them together, and then assign to the scene color. Once we save this, we get this totally distorted plane, right? Now, one way to control this distortion is with a power node. If we increase this B value, we get less distortion. But if you look closely, you will notice that the image that we are getting is flipped. That's because this is mapping what our camera is seeing to the UV of this plane. But what we want instead is to pass the screen position. And as you can see now we have the correctly mapped distortion. Now to control this distortion amount we are going to need a remap and we are going to remap 1. 1 is going to be our in value. And we are going to create a vector 2 that we are going to connect to the in minimum and maximum. The x is going to be 0 but the y is going to be controlled by a vector 1 called distortion amount. And once we save this, as you can see, zero is no distortion, but if we start increasing the distortion amount, we get what is expected, which is a nice heat distortion. Really cool. But we need to limit this, so let's set the distortion amount to a slider. Alright, so at this point we have these hard edges. The easiest way to fix them is by adding a text 2D our main texture, push it up here, and for example, whatever is black in this texture will have no distortion. I'm gonna use this texture, but you can use the default particle, it will work too, but the area of distortion is very small. And this texture is going to be multiplied with a simple noise, just like this and connect it to the power, save it, and now in my material, if I assign again the texture, as you can see, we only have distortion exactly on the white area and everything between white and black is faded. And we don't see any hard edge. Great! But we still need a few more things. For example, we can add a distortion scale to control the scale of the simple noise. But what we really need is a twirl motion. So let's add a twirl node that is going to be connected to our simple noise and as you can see it distorts the simple noise UVs and it creates this nice spiral, this nice twirl. And we are going to need a vector 1 
for the rotation amount and then another vector one for the twirl strength. The rotation amount is going to be multiplied with the time and if we press spacebar we can search for a rotate node connected to the twirl and then connect the rotation amount multiplied by the time to the rotation of the rotate. A lot of rotation going on. But hey, we got this rotating and if we saved it and maybe increase the twirl strength we get this really nice distortion going on. I mean, look at this, it's really cool. Alright, so we have the distortion done. Now, before we move on, let's add the empty in our scene, reset its transform, parent the plane with the transform also resetted, so we can then add a sphere. Right, and for this sphere, we need a new shader, a new unlit graph for the Fresno. It's going to be super simple, this shader. We can add a Fresno. And then a vector 1 for the Fresno power. And then we can add a color for the Fresno color with the mode set to HDR. And then we can multiply the color with the Fresno effect and connect this to the color input. And that's it. That's basically it. Now let's create a material out of this shader. Assign that material to the sphere. And I'm gonna set the Fresnel power to 3. And then the Fresnel color to a purple similar to this one and increase the intensity. So basically this is going to be the center of our black hole, right? Something like this should be fine for now. Okay, so for the swirls, we actually need Photoshop or GIMP or Krita. And I'm gonna start with a file like this one with 2048 by 2048. Select the brush tool with white for the color and create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N. And then with the brush more or less of this size. And while holding Shift, I'm going to create a line like this. Duplicate this layer, rotate it 90 degrees, merge the two layers with Ctrl E, select the background with Shift and press V so we can have these align options up here, right? And then the idea now is to go to Filter, in the start, we want to use the Twirl modifier. And we can use an angle of around 250 and 300, that should be fine. And here we go, we have a nice spiral. Now what I'm going to do is erase a little bit these pointy ends and make them thinner towards the end, as you can see. So we have a nice looking spiral, right? Once this is done, I'm going to save directly this Photoshop file to my Unity project. And then back to Unity, I'm going to create a material, rename it Swirl. And in Shader, we can assign in the Universal Render Pipeline in Particles the unlit version, right? And the surface is going to be transparent, the blending mode is going to be additive, render face, we want to see this from both sides, and then we want to assign in our base map the swirl we just created. And for this one, I'm actually going to use the particle system because it's much quicker to work with and because it's just a few particles. Right, so the start lifetime of this particle is going to be big, like 15 and 20. And we don't want any start speed, we don't want this to move. So let's set that to zero and let's assign the material we just created, by the way. Set this to local, the random alignment. Turn off shape, by the way. Start size, in my case, it's going to be around 3 and 9. I'm going to create this gradient, by the way, for the color lifetime. And select two colors for the start color. A violet and a purple, something like this. And I know this is really bright, but all we got to do is go to the emission and set this to around 1 or 2. That should be fine. Then we can set the start rotation to be random between these values. And 
We want this to shrink, so let's use the size of a lifetime. It goes from big to small, just like this. And the only thing we need to do is rotate minus 90 degrees in the X. And that's it, it's looking nice. Let's just turn on rotation of a lifetime and insert these values, minus 10 and minus 30. So it follows along with the heat distortion shader, you know? And by the way, these are my values for the heat distortion. In case you are wondering, I'm using rotation amount minus one. So it goes in the opposite direction and it gives this nice absorbing sensation, you know, that nice motion that is being absorbed. What we can also do with the sphere is increase the intensity of the Fresnel color and maybe make it smaller, just like this. That should be enough. And as you can see, we have a really beautiful black hole, very customized, obviously. Probably black holes don't look like this, who knows, we just have a pixelated image for now. But hey, at least we can dream about it and make something as cool as this, right? Now, for the last part, let's add some particles with VFX graph, something simple and quick. So let's create with right click a visual effects graph. I'm gonna drag and drop it to my black hole prefab, just like this in the middle, and then press edit to open this window. I'm gonna dock it here, make some room, and the first thing we want to do is increase the capacity, and we can also increase a little bit the rate, just like this. So now we can go down here and select the default particle or another particle that you have around. Set this to additive. And let's control the size with a set size. Which is going to be random, uniform by the way. Around 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. And nothing changes because the size of a lifetime is overwriting any previous value, so let's set that to multiply and select this curve, we want to go from big to small and the particles are really tiny so let's set the size to 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 actually now we want these particles to start in a sphere position so let's add the sphere with a radius of 2.2 .2. Now, these particles, we want them to go inwards, to go to the center of our black hole, like if they are being absorbed. For that, we can go to Update Particle and use a Conform to Sphere. As you can see, the radius of the sphere is a little bit too big, so let's decrease it to around 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, something around those values. Now, the attraction speed and attraction force are too high. As you can see, it's pulling the particles inwards really fast. So let's decrease the traction speed to 1 and the traction force to 5. We actually want to use a random attraction speed so they don't all have the same attraction, right? So let's create a random number between 0 and 1 for now and connect it to the traction speed. Alright, so as you may notice the particles are still in a sphere shape and we actually don't want that, we want to flatten that sphere in the Y. So we want to set position and the particles lose their previous position. So let's make sure that we feed them their previous position with get attribute position, the current location. But since we want to change the Y, we want to flatten sphere, we can create a vector tree, connect the X and the Z respectively. And now if you connect this vector tree to the set position, all of the particles have the same y value in the position, which is zero, right? So if we feed a random number between something like minus 0, 01 and 0, 01, we are increasing that y value. Maybe something like minus 0, 0.2. And as you can see, now the sphere is not flat, it's not a circle, but it has some volume. Now to add a spiral motion to these particles, we need to once again set position, but before 
all of this before the conform to sphere and before the set position we have used it right now we want to use a rotate 3d and the rotation axis is already set to y which is what we want actually but the position of this rotate must be the previous position of the particle because we don't want to erase the previous position of the particle right so we want once again the get attribute position for the angle we can use a random number and that's it we only need to connect the rotate 3d and yeah the rotation is really strong so i'm going to decrease it to something like between 0 and 0 0.01 maybe even less it adds a really nice motion and i think the particles are still a little bit too big so i'm going to decrease them to around 0 0.01 and 0 0.1 yeah that seems better and the attraction speed is also big maybe 0 0.3 looks better definitely okay so that's looking really cute we have a nice black hole the distortion shader really adds a lot to the visual aspect of this black hole i obviously made a few variations that are exclusive to my patreon page in case you are interested to have access to them i left the link in the description there's also a lot of visual effects that you can use in your projects in your games so yeah that's basically it make sure to check it out I want to say thank you to all my patrons that have been supporting me. You guys are awesome. Your support really means a lot. And a special shout out goes to the super mega patrons, which are Alejandro, Angel R. Dev, Show James, Amantas, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himarias PC, Josh McCormick, Ram and Yola, Ken Lee, Marco Rossi, Nikolai Slodus, Psychotech Studios, Robin Boutreau, Silvio Fumé, Steven Melton, TK, Xar. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you in the next one.